Hello everybody, today I want to go over your metering exercise. Um, to do this, the first thing I did is I found a, um, a well-lit scene that wasn't overly bright that had some light, dark, and neutral areas in it. I also turned my um, ISO to 100. I turned off my autofocus. I set my shutter speed to a hundredth of a second, and that's my base speed. I try to keep it this setting as much as I can. But when I was trying to find my darkest area, I'd actually had to actually change my shutter speed to to be able to uh, to bring out the details in the darks. So this is my base exposure. It's at one hundredth of a second at f six point three. You'll notice that this scene overall is well exposed. There are some areas that are um, overexposed in the highlights, and there's some shadows that there's no detail in. So by by uh, meter in different parts of the scene, I'm able to bring out details in each of these. Now, a JPEG file um, really only has about five stops of exposure latitude. <clears throat> so that means anything outside of those five stops, and those are pretty much two stops over and two stops under exposure, it's going to lose detail in it if it goes beyond that. So as photographers, what we do is we either shoot in a raw format are we uh, shoot exercises like this where we'll shoot an overexposed shot and an underexposed shot and we'll blend the two together. Now it's a lot easier if you have a raw file because I can burn and dodge which is a traditional darkroom technique. So burn would bring a uh, bright area and make it darker and dodge would bring a dark area and make it lighter. So what I've done for this exercise is to show you um, the different parts of the scene and different exposures is I've pretty much just bracketed <clears throat> up and down my camera shooting it. Um, try to stay at the same shutter speed, but I I use uh, different f-stops. And you'll notice how certain areas get lighter or darker. Now this scene, to get some details in the shadows, I had to go below my hundredth of a second setting. You might have to do so also to be able to meter these darkest areas to get detail in them. <clears throat> now remember our cameras see everything in neutral gray. <clears throat> so when I meter the darkest area or the brightest area, it's going to make it more of a neutral color. So it's going to make my bright area darker, and it's going to make my darker area brighter. So it's probably going to be um, too bright <clears throat> here and too dark there. So as a you know, what I can do is I can decide you know to leave it like that, or that's where I'd go in and burn and dodge and try to fix it. So let's go through these and look at this. Now, <clears throat> in order to, to meter this lightest or brightest area, there's a couple different options. You can either physically walk closer and find the brightest and the darkest area to see. So for the sky, I could just point my camera up to the sky, meter it, and then use that meter setting to take the picture. Or I could walk up to this part of the wood right here and meter that. Um, the sky is still going to be the, bar the brightest part of the scene, but this is probably the second brightest area. So that's one option. And same thing with the shadows. I can just walk up and meter underneath the wood here, or you know, behind these, underneath these trees. Or if I have a telephoto lens, I can just zoom my lens in closer and meter these areas. And both times on a meter, when I zoom in or walk closer, I'm going to set my camera back to the needle, back to the middle. And then I'm going to step back and take a picture. Now the other option is a little bit more advanced, but I can actually change my meter mode in my camera to spot meter, and it's only going to meter the center part of your lens. Uh, and then again, it does help if you have a telephoto lens to use that. So you can also use that method. Be careful with the spot meter, and you have to make sure you turn it back off when you're not using it, as it can throw your exposures all over the place. <clears throat> So my, uh, a JPEG Im image, like I said, is gonna have about a five stop range. What we wanna really, really be careful with though with uh, shooting digitally is not to um, over lose exposures in our highlights. So I'll tend to underexpose my images a little bit. If I overexpose anything, I cannot retain that detail back in that. That's one thing that a, a digital image can't do, even in RAW. If it's severely overexposed, you can never get that detail back. Now, if I underexpose something, I can make something brighter, but it's going to add uh, noise to the image, and it's going to get real noisy and grainy looking if it's severely underexposed. 
So um, again, I tend to try to retain details and highlights as much as I can, uh, but it's going to vary on image to image. You know, like for this image, I don't mind if the sky is going to be a little bit brighter. The main part of the picture is the subject is this old house right here. And this is where I want to keep most of my detail in. I want to be able to see the detail in the grain and the wood. Um, the same thing with the shadows. If I have shadows back here that don't have a whole lot of detail in it, I'm okay with that. As long as I have detail in the main part of the, of the house, I'm okay with it. The same way up here, I'd like to have details in the vines here. But again, right so much here, I could either burn that in, you know, post-production, or dodge this a little bit post-production. But I try to achieve the uh, you know, best exposure I can when I'm out taking a picture and not rely so much on like Photoshop to fix it. But let's look at these exposures and let's see what happens here. So the first picture I took was at a 30th at F4. So this is for the shadow area. So now you'll notice in my shadows here, there's more detail in it in the darkest part of the scenes. Okay, but look how overexposed the rest of the picture is. This is really, you know, unusable other than if I wanted to go back and get some details in the shadows. So let's go back and make the shadows. I'm just going to go through my settings here. Now for this one, I did have to go, my, my largest aperture on my lens is f4, so I had to go down a 30th of a second and able to get details in those shadows. So if we go to a 60th, You'll notice now where my, um, this is a little bit darker, to a hundredth, a little bit darker. And this is probably a pretty good range where it should be at. Since it's a shadow area, it's not going to be neutral anyway. It's going to be a little bit underexposed. And that's how our camera sees things. Here's a hundredth of the five. It's not too bad, but I want you to still notice how overall the picture is pretty overexposed. Here's my base exposure again. This isn't too bad, but it would be nice to have a little bit more detail back into the shadow area, which was probably around F4. Now let's look at 100 to F8. Uh, now you'll notice how we're losing details in the shadows, but we're starting to gain details in these highlights. The highlights are starting to look better. And now the highlights look really good in trees right here. We still don't have any detail in the sky, really, and but we got some detail over here. So this might be a good area to have, um, you know, burn these these trees and leaves into, other than the shadowed area. So let's keep going. And you just notice how the sky starts getting darker. So this was at uh, f13, hundredth of a second, hundredth of a second, f18. A hundredth of a second at F22. So F22 now, we're starting to get the sky with detail with a you know as a neutral area where it's going to be um, it's going to be a little bit underexposed. So for the sky, I don't mind if the sky is a little overexposed, but then again, I can go in and burn it in if I wanted this much detail in it. But look how you know look at the rest of our picture. We have a uh, you can see where our highlights are at, our brightest areas are, but we lost all detail in the front of the house. <clears throat> We've um, lost, definitely lost detail in the trees and the trees pretty much all together. So I'm going to go back through these and I'll just let you kind of see how the, the picture changes. So for your uh, project, you want to shoot one with a, you know, overall scene, and then you want to take a picture of the uh, darkest part of the scene, take a picture, and then one of the brightest part of the scene, and those are are the ones you're going to turn in. But I hope this makes sense to you, and I I recommend go ahead, um, go ahead and shoot a series of pictures. It does help if you have your camera on the tripod, which I didn't in this case. But go through and you know leave your shutter speed the same if possible, and just shoot through all your f stops and see what kind of difference it makes. Start with your largest f stop opening, if it's uh, f4, 2.8, 3.5. Start with that, and then start changing your f stop. Shoot one at 5.6, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7. 
22. This will leave your shutter speed the same and notice how your picture is going to start getting darker but your brightest areas are going to have more detail in it. I hope, I hope this helps you out some.